Thank you to the three of you for joining backstage on this special panel for Pam and Tommy, um, Taylor Schelling, Sebastian Stan, and Lily James, of course. Um, so I, I guess the best place to start with this is just a congratulations on all three of your performances on this project. Um, really stellar work and obviously such a interesting and complex story to, to mine. Um, take us to the beginning and, and we can start there just in terms of the opportunity to revisit and kind of reframe a story that a lot of people think they might already know what about that was especially interesting to you and um yeah how, how did you go about kind of first diving in to those initial scripts uh lily we can start with you um well i was completely drawn to the project on so many different levels. I mean, the scripts were so strong um, and there was such a huge journey from the start to the finish. Um, and all of everything the show explores, you know, of um, privacy and, or lack of privacy and, you know, this time with the birth of the internet and what that m means for us all, especially now with social media and how that kind of, <clears throat> has the potential to really kind of influence and hurt and as well as, you know, the good things it does too, but it takes our privacy away even more. How women are treated in the media, um, they're sort of double standards. There's just so much in this mad setting of a time when the internet was just being birthed um, that were to me felt so interest interesting and, and I felt very passionate about exploring those themes. Um, and as you said, reframing this story um, in from today's lens, but also just kind of revealing the truth of the story and this crime that took place that people just didn't know about because the media just tells us what they want to tell us without any regard for truth. Um, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Taylor, to jump to you, because Lily, of course, refers to this as a crime. I, what, what I found especially compelling about your character is that the perspective that she brings to the table really is the delineation between like consent, consensual sex work and what actually happened to Pamela Anderson. Um, so what about that perspective and kind of bringing that, bringing that to the table especially excited you? Well, you know, I think it was exactly that. I think it took, and this speaks to the, to the creators of the series doing a really good job that I think it took a woman who was um, inside of a successful career in sex work and the adult entertainment industry to speak authentically and clearly with great clarity as to why Pamela Anderson was not engaged in sex work and why she was not consensually involved in the adult entertainment industry. And what Erica, my character, is doing is consensual adult of her own volition, a choice. And she's able to say what, what happened over there is different than my experience. And I think that that is, it's a grace note to the series, but it's very vital to the story to sort of illustrate dramatize, and, and dramatize um, what makes that different. And so I loved it. I love that. There's, I think it's episode six or seven where Eric is able to just say, were there fucking consent forms? What she's doing is not what I do and do not conflate us. And I love that. That scene, I was like, sign me up. <laughs> that, 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 that was the that was the thing that made you say yes I love it and uh, I, yeah S S Sebastian to, to jump into this role of Tommy Lee of course a larger than life real world figure um you've worked with Craig Craig Gillespie before on I Tanya and I feel like thematically that it's also doing a similar reframing of of a well-known figure um so what interested you about tackling Tommy Lee and, and being a part of this project with Craig once again? Um, I, I think it really does start with him for me because um, I, I, I had such a great experience working with him on, on Itania and then I, I felt he had such a um, command of, of that story and, and the way 
that it was told and, and helping us sort of process it differently and finding that fine line between humor and and sort of the the human struggle which 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 we all face to some extent but in particular to go to that story um you know i thought it was it was sort of very unique and um and uh so so in his hands this felt sort of right and and obviously um scripts were really great and and a lot to the story i didn't know and 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 then there's um there's obviously the the part that kind of draws you to it you know and wanting to find out more and 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 anytime there's sort of some slight kind of misunderstanding or uh, misperception or or injustice of some sort i i i it definitely get you know makes my, the the hair on the back of my neck stand up and 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 that and that part of it but also just uh fear is always a good indicator that you should maybe try and do something because it it means that to some extent you, you're not aware or you haven't quite understood something the, the right way and maybe exploring it further is the way to do it so th there was a lot of pieces to it and, and it's interesting that you use the word fear i feel like there's a certain intimidation to playing real characters in general but also um, just thematically, this is a lot to tackle. What, what were you fearful of in, in terms of tackling Tommy Lee? Um, just because I have nothing in common with the man. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, like, I don't, you know, I don't have tattoos. I didn't play the drums. I, I don't, you know, uh, I, I just didn't, it felt like such a big stretch, you know, and I, I <laughs> without Craig in there, I don't even know if those guys really saw it at first, you know. But again, as an actor, you sort of kind of it, it always ends up piquing your interest when when you when you feel like something feels very far away from you, you, you it inspires you to want to go and educate yourself about it as much as possible. Absolutely. And was fear at all a role in um, your taking on a Pamela Anderson, Lily? Yeah, <laughs> there was so much fear. And actually, I realized it's quite a good place to work from because it really motivates them. <laughs> There's no chance to sort of rest on your laurels or, um, and, and particularly with this, you know, we're experiencing, experiencing not only real people's lives, but something deeply sensitive. And so I just was driven and I cared so much. And all I wanted to do was to try and do her justice and, and sort of explore the story and the greater repercussions. And we all did that seriously with great heart and great commitment. And, um, and yeah, but like Sebastian said, I think also I was, it's as a, there's a, the fearful challenge part of it is, um, is sort of, you know, it's a, it is an exciting place to work from and it, and it, cause it pushes you to the, your boundaries and pushes you to the limits of what you, you thought possible and, and, and allows you to really transform and explore another person. And, and, and that as an actor is such a, a gift. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, for, for both Lily and Sebastian in particular, so much has been said about the, the physical transformation that was demanded of these roles in addition to obviously all the emotional mining and the, and the actually work that, that you guys do behind the scenes. Um, in, in what ways do you, if you could speak to kind of your process for a second, the marriage between the external factor of these characters and really embodying them physically and then also doing that emotional work um, what, what did that look like, kind of bringing those things together? And um, I, I mean, I'm sure, for instance, putting on the wig and prosthetics and tattoos, and that kind of helps you build the character. But if you could speak to that for a bit, I'd love to hear more. Okay, Sebastian. Well, I, I, I always go back to that first, um, the first camera test where, uh, you know, like I think um, we, we sort of started to feel or I certainly did more more confident because up until that point it was just always just this um, ongoing kind of question of um, you know am I really gonna like because I was sitting at home and I and I know Lily was too like we were we, we hadn't even gotten to LA yet and I think or you know we were watching a lot of videos and just on repeat the interviews anything you could find and and listening to the audio 
you know, of, 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 of them, you know, for me, of him, obviously. And, and then, so it was not until that first day that I think that, that once we got the hair and makeup component that I think some of the other work started to sort of feel like it was going to be there, but it just was this brand trust. We rehearsed one day and I remember it was at Craig's house. And I'm returning to Lily and being like, are we supposed to like, you know, like, Oh, looks like we may have frozen a bit. Is he frozen for you too? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, well, Lily, if you want to jump in and speak to the physical transformation, uh, yeah. Um, it was extraordinary. I mean, truly. And the journey from our first test to where we landed with, um, in the end, I ended up having a forehead piece and the prosthetic boobs, not all the time, but sometimes. And I had teeth, I had contact lenses. I know Sebastian had contact lenses too. Um, nails, the whole thing. So it was just like morphing into someone else. And it was so exciting to see yourself in the mirror at the end of it and to experience that first camera test and to look at um, Sebastian and only see Tommy Lee. It was like, we were able to really believe in it together. Um, but you know, it took sort of sometimes four hours in the morning and what I would do in that entire four hours was watch interviews and listen to Pam. So the length of time it took to get me physically transformed, I was able to use that time to like switch into the voice and, you know, change how I spoke and the speed and the thing. And, and so I, I used the time to also do the other work. So I was actually incredibly, incredibly grateful for it. Um, cause it kind of took that long each morning to um refined her <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and, and taylor you you of course are playing a real person as well perhaps uh lesser known but well known in certain circles um in what ways did you prepare to play a, a real person that that might echo that were you were you do, doing video research and and things of that nature. she has a lot of videos she has a lot of videos yes <laughs> there's a lot of research that one can do um, <laughs> uh yeah i um i watched her videos you know the physical transformation was not nearly what um sebastian and lily were dealing with but um it is really interesting just to know that the person that is a part of the story was once a, a living, breathing entity that was eating and drinking and going to sleep. And, um, you know, that Erica was actually quite a, a radical character. And I thought that she would be kind of, she would appreciate, she's not alive anymore or she's not on, she's not on the, you know, she passed, but, um, I spent as much time as I could tracking down. She became a director. She was one of the first female directors of uh, porn. And um, that seemed like it made sense of her completely to me. Yeah, I mean, e even the fact that she was one of the first in taking that leadership position behind the camera, I feel like that you can denote certain things about her personality and about the way that she comports yes. herself off camera. Yeah. Um, yeah, certainly. yeah, totally. There wasn't, there wasn't, there's not a lot of information about who she was, but just knowing that that's an action that she took in her life made a lot of sense. And that actually DV, one of the writers was telling me that that's why, you know, she, she, there's a moment where she talks about how she noted how the, the camera angles and how the tape was actually shot. She was seeing it through um, a director's eyes, which I thought was cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. outside of this project too, um, I obviously am familiar with all of your bodies of work and the training that you've had. Considering the audience today at Backstage is uh, a lot of the working actors and creators of the world, I'd, I'd love to hear about um, kind of the, the training that you've had in the craft and the things that you still kind of carry in your back pocket with you roll to roll. So if, if there was one thing in between, um, I mean, I know Fordham and NYU and Guildhall, um, you, you have various different uh, training programs. 
Um, what, what is something that you've carried with you through the years, if, if you could share one or two bits of, of kind of the craft? <clears throat> He's gonna go back. Okay, yeah, <clears throat> I, I got my cue. Um, I, you know, I think, I think, I, I don't know. I, I, I always go back to this thing. Like, I, uh, I think you spend so much time trying to, um, or I spend a lot of time trying to often um, control everything, you know, in, in a scene. And, and, and because it's, it's so uncertain and that the nature is, you know, I, I obsess about every, what it means, what I'm going to do. I try to, I spent all this time the night before, like making all these choices and how, you know, how I'm going to say it, what, it, 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 all these things. And then it's really almost, almost every time I go it, to the day and on, on the day, it, it almost never ends up that mm -hmm. way, you know? And I guess like what I've learned is um, two things happen. One, um, you have to factor in that there's other people in the scene and a director and then there's going to be a multitude of ideas and you have to sort of stay open in a way and not try to drive some agenda through the thing, you know, um, whatever made sense to you yesterday might not make sense anymore now. And, and then you have to sort of like kind of be okay with that. And, and so almost like relinquish control and, and, on the way to get getting there, um, guess what? Like you didn't really sleep well the night before because maybe you had a fight with somebody or I don't know, you got a distressing phone call and uh, the, the morning of, you know, you spilled your coffee. Like there's 50 things that happen before you get to that moment anyway. And along the line, there might, like you just have to kind of factor that somehow that might help actually the scene in a way and so it's just mm. it's almost like this weird unconventional marriage between applying like um you know there's a book like book smart uh, like studying part of it and then there's also this other part where you just say fuck it and you know kind of go with whatever's true for you that mm. on that day in that moment mm. you know does that at all echo your experience, Lily or Taylor? And and, and also, I'm, I'm curious if there was a learning curve to learning to say, fuck it, and to, to kind of be more off book in that way. Either of you who want to jump in. Well, I mean, I would say that working with Sebastian, he he really does do that. And he really like, and he really made me more brave, I think, and open and receptive to the given moment and to the unexpected and to like doing what's wrong Wrong often and, and seeing what that opens up and um I think it is like one of the most important things it's like you you want to be relaxed so that anything can happen but then at most of the time it's such a tense experience so you have to really force yourself to be relaxed which is kind of counterintuitive you kind of can't do that so um <laughs> but I, I work with an amazing acting coach called Martin Ledworth and I really work with him on this because he's just brilliant and <laughs> we do all these like we do all these like three and a half hour zooms where I'd like stay in character and he he talks a lot about like really relating it and knowing the state of being of the scene like in relation to you and how you can associate with it and then if you find that state of being everything else is like fag like you don't have to control anything like because you're acting from the right emotional state and I found that's the most useful thing for me is to really just for a minute before or however long before like really try and click in to what is bubbling inside of you to allow you to respond. Mm. Yeah. And t Taylor, anything you would add to that? No. And it's all right <laughs> if not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, that all, that all sounds amazing. I mean, I, I've done a lot. I, I wholeheartedly agree. I think learning to be not in control is sort of the actor's razor's edge spiritual mm. journey. Um, the thing that I really appreciated about all my years of acting school, I was in, you know, I did, so, I've done so much school, um, is that I really learned, and this, I still use this today, and I really value it, that it's 
we're really all dancing with each other and we're all, I'm always a part of a company. I'm always a part, I'm always collaborating with a group of actors. And then the thing is that that sort of like expands out at ripple, that thing of like being in rehearsal and being with your people and you all like, we're all in it together. Then that just energetically expands out to the crew and to the 150 people that are around you at work. But that sense of being a part of a, like everyone succeeding means that I will succeed. Everyone, everyone feeling like they're doing their best work. Where, uh, you know the word I'm trying to think of is web. That really, I, that's surprisingly something that from all of my acting times is, I feel that in my bones and I'm really grateful for it. And I can see that, that not having had that conservatory experience sometimes can leave people feeling a bit more isolated. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, I'm profoundly grateful that I have that reference point um, so that's, that's something I use almost every day I go onto a set. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, Lily had mentioned kind of, kind of what she learned acting opposite Sebastian here. What is something you learned while working with Seth? Cause obviously he was kind of your, your main, uh, scene partner through the whole thing. Do you feel like you've picked up anything by working with, with Seth Rogen? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I no. Seth is so generous and so kind and so funny. I think it's actually really similar to the way I was hearing Lily talk about Sebastian. There's he has you know he's definitely put in his ten thousand hours of being on a set and is so um, available to what's actually happening. And then that gives makes me feel more emboldened to be available to what's actually happening. And also, even in terms of that company thing of like a group of actors, he's a really, really good scene partner because he makes me, he goes out of his way. He, ma he went out of his way to make me feel safe and, and, and capable. And um, it's just a really good scene partner. So I'm, I'm always really, because I'm like, oh my God, he's like a, you know, Seth Rogen. And I really like a, keyed in to everyone around him. And I appreciated that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, in our final few minutes here, I do want to speak a bit about, um, the, bring it back to the, the kind of physical transformations of the show, the physical demands. Um, I am really fascinated thematically how this show explores sexuality and the physical demands that it has of several of its actors. What was your experience on set with intimacy coordination or just kind of navigating that um, in terms of bearing more than you might be accustomed to on camera? Um, how, how did you kind of navigate that? And was that something that you, you learned anything from? Any advice for other actors who might find themselves in that position? Anyone who wants to jump in would be great. Well, I think it kind of extends on from everything we're talking about. Like for me, I had such a scene partner in Sebastian who I trusted implicitly and who looked after me and I looked after him. Like we made that promise right at the start. And so um, then it was, it was about just progressing the story. And in this, we knew that their, their chemistry and the sex within it was, we made sure it was essential. So it really just became about not only finding the reason for it to make sure it is essential, but then like feeling completely comfortable with your own boundaries and how we're gonna block it. And I felt like it was a very um, positive, organic um, experience within this. I really would, there was nothing, it was really as brilliant as it can ever be. Of course, it's awkward. And of course, like, you know, it's very bizarre to do that with someone with loads of people watching, but, um, but yeah, you just need to make sure you know it's right and 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 you're supported, you know. Yeah, I, I think that's a really important phrasing in terms of determining that it's essential, right? right? Because that 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 is that is kind of step one to deciding uh -huh. how, how is this moving the story forward? How is how is this building the character? Yeah. Um, well, well, what I was going to throw in there also is just it's communication with the director and everybody, mm -hmm. right? Like Craig actually had all these specific shots 
that he was wanting to do for a lot of sort of the nudity and 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 stuff that was happening um and it was just essential i think for us to kind of know what the shot was and so i would just add remember that whether it's your first gig or like 30 gigs down the line you have ownership over being able to go up and and say to the director or to the producers or whoever's there hey i i want to see the shot i want to see yeah. what you're seeing i want to see where it comes i want like explain to me what what's the purpose here like what are we after what are we capturing you know and and then shoot it and go back and rewatch it and if for some reason something's just not feeling right then then it's okay to say something because that's what it should be it should be it should be this place where we can all go okay are we okay are we you yeah. know and, and, it, and not ever topple into one side having more of a say than, than anybody else on that day you know yeah yeah definitely makes sense um well as a final question for the three of you i'm going to leave it on maybe a bit of a fun note um i feel like pam and tommy falls into a time when we are seeing a lot of film and TV projects that, not to keep using this phrase, but kind of are reframing these narratives specifically about women um, in, in ways that we haven't really considered before and ways that are very deserved. Um, who would you be interested in seeing on screen next get this kind of treatment and kind of kind of reframing of their story? That is such a good question. I know. Yeah. I'm like, I feel like it stumped me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Personally, I I would go with Britney Spears. I think that that her story offers a lot, brings a lot to the table. If if that gets the the juices flowing, I'm not sure. Oh, like you mean somebody that's already been like a yeah, like that document those two documentaries are really yes. interesting about her. In that vein. Yeah. I would love to see someone do Brittany Murphy. Oh. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my like God, I just really, saw really the- uh, Brilliant I, person. I, yeah, I saw that um, documentary. Yeah. Was just- I mean, it's just so, it's such a micro of like the, the, of, at the macro, it's such a map that whatever, that time was just so toxic. It, mm. And I'd love, yeah, it's interesting. Well, we, we can leave it on on that grace note of Brittany Murphy then. Um, but th this really was such a treat to to speak with you three and to get to know you a little bit, discuss process and Pam and Tommy. Um, congratulations again on, on all your success with this project and uh, really excited to see what you do next. So thank you. Thank you, man. All right. Hey, well, bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>